welcome back. Today we're going to look at a new server that was meant to replace the disseminator. As you may have seen in some previous videos, the disseminator was created to replace an even older server. And while the disseminator was good for most jobs, I ended up having to replace it because of some problems, specifically with mass storage. It was really difficult to replace drives and even add new drives because adding new drives required me to turn the server off and take it down from the top shelf that it was sitting on. The second problem I faced was increasing demand. While the 5960X was powerful, it was becoming overtaxed and also using a lot of power. And I started to need to look at new solutions. Two Xeons with eight cores each giving me a total of 32 thread, which then led to the advent, the new server to replace the disseminator. So without further waiting, let's go ahead and check it out. I bought this server that was made by Quanta off eBay for $300 and I added my own 192 gigabytes of RAM and also two Xeons that were eight cores each, giving me a total of 32 threads. As you can see here, there are 12 hot swappable bays and in these four bays here are four five terabyte Western Digital Red drives and these bays are five one terabyte Western Digital Black drives. One thing I love most about this is the easy access to the hard drive bays and I can easily swap in and out hard drives as I need to add or remove storage. So if one hard drive goes down that's in the RAID, it can be easily replaced and the RAID can be brought back up. In the very back here, we have two SSDs and a RAID 1 that's running the operating system. And right here is my RAID card that's using a SAS mini cable to connect all the hard drives up front. The hard drive typically has a shroud here that goes over the CPU heat sinks. And in order to keep the server quiet, I had to use resistors to keep all these fans spinning at lower RPM so it wouldn't be as loud, and use some splitters to help cool down the CPUs due to the reduction in fan speed. These are two 80 millimeter Noctua fans that are just ghetto mounted in here with nothing really holding them down except their own weight. And surprisingly, the cover actually fits on top of here without interfering with the fans placement. These help keep the CPU heat sinks, giving me about 45 degrees to 44 degrees Celsius of runtime temperatures under minimal load and then somewhere between 55 and 60 degrees Celsius on heavier load. Now these fans might not be too loud on video but I assure you when all four of them are spinning all full throttle it can be very loud and heard all the way across the apartment. So here we go it's spinning up. It's actually spinning this fan here because that's just how much air is moving through here. Look at that. Absolutely amazing how powerful that fan is. And now imagine what it would sound like with all four. And even though I lost all the video footage of where I installed all 192 gigabytes of RAM, one of the problems I actually ran into is that the server would not accept all 192 gigabytes. So currently it's running only 160 gigabytes of the RAM that I purchased. Which kind of sucks, but it's not a big deal because it's more RAM than I'll probably ever need anyway. And for fun, I added one Asus GTX 950 Mini to the server so I could have HD output and play some games on very low settings basically for when guests came over or just for experimentation purposes. I also added the four port NIC that came out of the disseminator right here and that gives me four additional ports for each of the virtual machines that are currently running. So Advent is running Windows Server 2012 R2 and Right now, it's under about a medium load, I would say, because I'm running three virtual machines, all running Windows 10 Pro, one for a Space Engineer server, the other for a Rust server, and the other one just for experimentation and kind of also uh, running a Bitcoin full node. Currently, the system's also mining Ethereum. I'm just kind of doing that for fun. I don't expect much from a 950, but it's just a little fun experiment to do anyway. So it's actually increasing the total wattage of the system. Now you would think with the two Xeons and 192 gigabytes of RAM that would be already a lot of power to use. But right now, including the switch, modem, and router, the total power being drawn from the wall is 156 watts. The initial transition from the disseminator to this went really well. One of the things I had intended to do was film the entire process. And I actually did film it and I had a lot of footage. When I went to go transfer all the data, I basically went through and scrubbed all of these files and folders that I didn't need anymore which led me to actually delete all of the raw video that I had that was completely uncut and unprocessed. So, now I have to film the video all over again, which I'm doing, but it's not that fun because you don't get to see the entire build process and some of the problems I ran into. 
like finding proper heat sinks for them. This motherboard has two narrow LGA 1150 sockets and not the regular square ones that you would find in other motherboards, especially ones with a lot more space. So I had some heating issues when I was trying to do various things like run too many servers or other problems, but luckily for me I had these two extra 80 millimeter Noctua fans laying around that I used in here. And I also tried a bunch of different configurations with those fans to try to, to cool the server as best as I could, which ended up leading me to what you saw earlier. Although I'm pretty bummed out about losing all the video footage from this server, I think I have something to make up for that in the very next video. So in that video, we're gonna crack open this box and see what's inside and possibly do a little tinkering and building of something else. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.